What's up guys, welcome back to Circle, back to another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be checking out a few more potential cars um, for the channel. So, uh, for those of you guys who don't follow my Instagram, you guys should definitely follow my Instagram. I have updates on there before I actually publish the videos. Uh, so check out my Instagram down below. But yeah, as far as the build, I was actually supposed to pick up an E60 M5 for the channel. Things went a little sideways. Um, it is what it is. Things happen in life and uh, the, the original owner of that car wanted to keep the car. Completely understandable. Um, sometimes I want to sell a car like the F80 M3 and I took it off the market myself because honestly I wanted to keep it but then somebody else set me up and ended up selling it. Any long story short, it's understandable. So long story short, we are heading on the Copart. This is actually Martinez, which is an hour and something like away from us. Kind of a little bit of a drive, but um, with my luck recently buying cars sight unseen, I want to go check it out before making a bid, making an offer, so we know to make a legitimate offer. Without further ado, let's head down to the Copart of Martinez. All right, guys, just got here to the Martinez location. It took us an hour and a half to get here. We did like halfway drive to Costco and then we finally got here. Um, anywho, it's about a 28 minute wait even even after getting here. I wish I was able to scan the barcode from my house. I'm an ideal, but it uh, looks like we have to wait another 30 minutes. It's taking us about two hours almost just to look at a few cars here. Guys, so this is a 535i. They're asking $1,400, buy it now. Um, 177,000 miles. So the question is, how bad is the damage? Because uh, obviously for a cheap car, you don't want to be paying that much in repairs. All right, so over here, guys, honestly, that looks pretty straight. Oh, that looks a little bit pushed back on this side. Honestly, this might be a little pushed back as well. Let's go ahead and just start this thing up. It looks like they did top it off with oil. That looks a little wonk. I don't know if that's supposed to be like that, but. So we finally got to open the door. There was no actual door handle on this door. The interior is actually pretty nice and it was an N54. It actually did get to start up. They were closing, so everything was kind of rushed, including a look at all the cars. We did get this thing to start up. We ultimately tested that the fact that it does start up, does have a check engine light, does have a lot of issues, but for 1400 bucks, it's actually not bad. But the next car, which is the main car we actually came out of this Copar for, was this M6. I don't know if it's called like an M F13 or whatever it's called, but it's an M6 uh, coupe, which I really love the coupes more than the grand coupes in my opinion. Um, the damage didn't seem terrible, but at the same time, the damage um, it, it was it was there. It was definitely there. And uh, in parts alone in this car, I did a little bit of research. The headlight, we're talking like fifteen hundred bucks. Um, the fender, we're talking like a grand right there. Another grand for the hood. Another grand for the bumper. I mean, parts on this car is actually very expensive. I don't really know why compared to like F80s and F82s. This is by far like the most expensive M parts I have seen. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the damage honestly doesn't look like it's any bad frame damage or anything like that, which was a really good sign. The only issue with the M6, though, is uh, the fact that I honestly couldn't get it to start up. Um, we They brought out a jumper, and we tried our absolute best like multiple times to try to get this thing started. I mean, you guys are about to hear it right now, but the only thing it really, really, really does is just keep cranking like the M8. We went to go check out the M8. It just kept on cranking. Um, so yeah, I mean, just hear it out, guys. So yeah, if you guys know what that means, does the car just not have enough power? We put like two jump boxes on there. Did not work. Same with the M8. I don't know if it's kind of like safety lock. None of the airbags are deployed. So, I mean, I feel like it should have started. Uh, but anyhow, we made it down to another car that has been on my bucket list for a long time, which is some kind of X car. This is an X3 G series. And uh, for the money, I think this is the best bang for the buck. I mean, you get the four cylinder, good fuel economy, very luxurious interior. This is a 2020. Um, I believe this one in particular, though, had like about 65 to 70,000 miles. It's a little high for a 2020. But for the money, um, I was assuming this is probably going to go for somewhere in the ballpark around 14. And for 14 for a 2020 BMW, um, I think it's really, really, really good deal. Um, we did check out the frame and everything. And everything actually seemed pretty straight, which I was really happy about. Again, with my luck with the i3 and uh, my recent M car, I was like, you know what? I need to check out these cars, make sure the frame damage um, is not as bad as it looks. And uh, thankfully, nothing too bad. We did get to check out the interior. All the airbags are deployed, the current airbags, the steering airbag, the knee airbag. It it's really important that we actually do research on all these parts mainly because eBay did not sell a single airbag so I'd have to get all these airbags from BMW 
which you guys know is a lot of money. That being said, also, we did see an M4. We don't really know why this M4 is here other than the fact that it is vandalized, um, but usually a vandalized car um, is usually done honestly from personal experience and just seeing how cars enter auction. Most vandalized cars have engine issues. So my experience is I believe that vandalized cars are done by the person, the owner, or they have some kind of friend do it or something, mainly because most of the vandalized cars that I see have either engine issues or transmission issues. And like, what are the odds that a car gets vandalized with engine or transmission issues? It's more of the fact that they probably blew their motor and they don't have the money to fix it and they have full coverage on it, so they might as well vandalize it. Insurance pays us out. Bada bing, bada bang, easy money. So um, yeah, that's my experience with the vandalism. That car had a lot of really weird damage to where it's like, how did they get inside the car but none of the windows are broken? Like, I just don't understand how this vandalism could have occurred unless you had the keys to the car. So it was a pass on this M4. Um, I really didn't want to rebuild the M4 right now because we actually just did re an M4 recently, um, but the M6 was very unique. I just don't know what's going on with that. If you guys know why an M6 or an M8 will not power on, it would just keep cranking, cranking, cranking. Uh, let me know down below, like I'm really curious to why that is um, none of the airbags are deployed so that is one thing and uh, yeah we're just doing a little bit more research guys we're just trying to find the right build on the channel it's been very difficult copart's been super dry the market honestly has been super dry for cheap cars at least we're trying to find either a cheap car locally or a really nice car on copart and I'm just having the worst luck of the world in the meantime our m3 should be coming back pretty soon and I want to do like a full cost build on that because a lot of you guys have been asking how much it actually cost me to build my e92 m3 and how much did it cost me to get it and all that good stuff so that video is actually very enjoyable mainly because it was a really good deal and i'm really happy about it end of the day after the frame damage and everything i still think we got a pretty good deal on that car so yeah update on that pretty soon but uh i would like to say hopefully a new build in the near future it is definitely gonna be in the near future i'm just no longer gonna say it in the next videos anymore because unfortunately with our luck we're just trying to get the right build i'm not trying to like you know say just because i said there's gonna be a build tomorrow i'm gonna go you know just rush by a build and then that build ends up being a mistake for the next month and then the next month so it's not worth it. so bear with me guys i love y'all so much just just bear with me a little bit i just don't want to make another financial bad decision i'm not gonna lie the i3 kind of made me super nervous to buy cars from copart again so i'm just trying to play it safe especially the i3 was a uh insurance car too so um they didn't even list the undercarriage damage even though it had undercarriage damage i thought i can trust insurance cars it looks like you really can't just trust anything like you have to go see it no matter what even if it's an insurance car you cannot trust the fact that they're they're not listing everything which is the undercarriage because that was terrible undercarriage on the i3 but yeah guys uh keeping these daily uploads are a little tough but i'm keeping you guys updated with my life pretty much day to day to day so you guys can see on every single day i'm either trying to do a modification to one of my cars or we're looking for a new car and that's what's going on so if you guys are wondering what a life of a youtuber is um my life literally consists of looking for new builds and building my cars it's quite enjoyable i love it it is very stressful at times and bringing content all the time is stressful but I'm trying to make the best of it. Uh, for those of you guys who also don't know, I'm trying to also do a 30 day challenge for hitting the gym. I'm trying to get my health in order as well. Uh, for those of you guys who don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you check out my Instagram down below. You guys can pretty much follow me and how, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay persistent. You guys know what I mean? I'm trying to start some new habits and uh, starting a gym habit is obviously a very healthy thing. And then obviously starting the YouTube grind for 30 days is also a very healthy thing. So I'm um, just trying to put some new things in my life, try some new things. And I think you guys should too start a 30 day habit because anything you put your mind to and do it for 30 days straight, trust me when I say this, but anything at all, whether it's the gym, whether it's your job, whether um, it's your relationship, anything that you spend 30 days consistently focusing on, you will ultimately make it a habit and it will become part of your routine. And I think that's really important. That's what I'm trying to do with YouTube. I think we're so far about 10 days in, which I'm very proud of, which I'm really happy about. And as far as the gym, I think we just passed 10 or 11 days on that as well. So uh, yeah, that's not bad. I'm very happy. Hopefully we can make it to 30 days on both and, and hopefully we can all try to get some new habits and better habits into our lives. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, that is going to have to conclude the video. Uh, I think today or tomorrow I'm going to be just working on the 328, hopefully trying to get the E92 M3 back. And uh, yeah, we're just going to we're just gonna enjoy life, guys. We're just going to enjoy life, build our cars, find some new cars. I'm just not going to be specific anymore what's going to go on in the next video anymore because honestly, that's my life. I don't really know, <laughs> to be honest and honest with you guys. So without further ado, that's going to have to conclude the video. I love you all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.